Hey y'all, welcome to the October version of the Screencastify free webinar series. Today we are blessed to be joined by Nicole Taylor, a Google certified innovator, uh, who is gonna talk all about digital storytelling with Screencastify. If this is your first webinar, you might not know that we love to introduce ourselves over in the chat box. So please feel free to tell us your name, where you're from, perhaps what brought you to this webinar and what you might seek to learn. Um, I am gonna go ahead and turn the floor over to Nicole um, and allow her to share her brilliant ideas. Hello everyone, I'm so glad to be here to share digital storytelling with Screencastify. I'm with you guys today. Screencastify is one of my favorite tools because it's just such a great layer of support when it comes to teaching and learning. So I am super excited to share some ideas with you guys. And so we will just jump right in. Here is my contact information. If you guys need anything or um, have any questions, or maybe you just want to share your amazing work after our webinar, you have other ideas that you can add into the pot. Um, I absolutely love to connect and learn from others. So please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can find me online at NicoleTaylor.com, on Twitter at Nicole, um, or you can email me at info at Nicole Taylor. So before we get started, like why video? I feel like video is such um, an important tool and it's it's easy to use and it's a game changer, but a lot of times it's something that um, people don't think to use. Um, so why video? Like why is it an important tool when it comes to teaching and learning? Well, research shows that the simple step of adding student engagement. So I think about a classroom of kids, 20 to 30 kids, depending on where you are, of course, the grade level, um, the age level of your kids. So I think about a classroom full of students and I think about all of the needs and the learning styles in that classroom. Um, can you imagine if you're a student and you um, need to see visuals and you need to hear um, the amount of kids that we um, leave out without video? So it immediately increases student engagement. Also, of course, increases comprehension. Again, thinking about um, different um, learning styles and what kids need. Um, research shows that it boosts achievement because it gives kids another opportunity to be successful with the content that we share with them. Increases retention and it's simply effective. Um, again, it just gives us, I know as a teacher, it gives me another opportunity to reach students and teach students in an engaging way. So now that we know why it's important, I just want to share um, a few great ideas that I have gained and learned about Screencastify and how it has helped us um, just take our teaching and learning um, to the next level. So the first thing that I want to start with is when we talk about stories, um, stories are not just limited to reading or language arts. Um, stories are in each and every subject area. So when we say stories, a lot of times I know our first mind is to go and think just simply ELAR or language arts, but I want you guys to think um, as we're together tonight that every content area that we teach gives us an opportunity to engage students with stories. It gives us an opportunity to bring in our own stories and connect with students but it also gives us the opportunity to allow students to use the power of storytelling to share their own thoughts and ideas. So some ideas, um, allowing kids to use video in order to explain their reasoning, to summarize reading, to retell or extend stories. I love when you allow kids to go and give us a another um, another ending, what, what do you think should happen? Allow the student to become the teacher. And then of course, um, a great reading example would be to explain main idea or any of those story elements. But um, as we kind of spend our time together tonight, I, some of the um, examples I will show you will be through that ELAR language arts lens, but I want you guys to, to think um, tonight just um, across the content area because everything that we teach should lend its, um, it's, we should be able to lend um, our voice to tell stories. 
So the first example that I want to share with you guys is just one of the ways that I have seen teachers and students successfully use slides in order to allow students to share their learning in order to tell um, what they know. And of course, um, slides, of course, I exactly, I put um, a, an image here of Google Classroom because that's a great way for kids to turn in their work um, in order for them to, to share the work with you as a teacher. Um, it's just a great way for um, you to hand out work and for kids to turn work back in. Um, creating stories with slides. So Google Slides, um, I'm using it right now as a presentation tool, but um, it's so much more than simply um, a presentation. Um, it, Google Slides allows us to bring stories to life. We can add text, we can add images, we can add videos, and then we give students the opportunity to take those stories that they write and share them with others. I am going to show you an example of a student story that was shared with me to just kind of show you the power of Screencastify and Google Slides. My own adventure starts the last week. I do. One day, the mommy was walking in together. He suddenly looked up and realized he was lost. What does the mommy do now? Where is my tool? The mommy asked. He searched for his tool everywhere, but he still couldn't find it. In the middle of the search, there was a big hamster that chased the mommy. The mommy ran around the house over the Nile River and past the temple. He ran and ran until he got tired. He saw a giant pink statue. I have to be close. Walk and walk. He walked and walked and found a market nearby the giant snake statue. He stopped by at the bakery store to learn. He continues. He continued his journey to find his tool. He searched and searched everywhere for his tool, but he still couldn't find it. I will never find my tool. The mummy cried. Suddenly, an Egyptian god called Ra came to him. You will find your tomb if you won't give up, Ra advised him. Then the mommy listened to Ra's advice and got back to his journey. He found a gigantic building that shaped like a pyramid in a, ahead a small town. Is that my tomb? He asked. He looked at it closely. That's my tomb, the mommy shouted in joy. He ran and ran rapidly to his tomb. He finally got back to his tomb safely and got a long rest in the tiring journey. The end. So I don't know about you guys, but I just think it's something special about hearing stories told by students in their own voice. So um, it's something um, really, really powerful about giving kids the tools to not only write their own stories, because that was such a cute story, but also giving them the tools so that they can then in turn turn around and tell their own stories in their own um, voices. So using something like this, allowing kids to tell um, their own stories with slides, you could easily take these stories and create an audio library of stories by students, for students to share um, in the classroom as well. And just think about the community of um, readers that you could have just by allowing kids to, not readers and writers, so allowing them to um, go ahead and put their own stories together and then share their stories with their peers. Another example we talked about earlier um, students explaining their work. Again, I talked about like when I talk about stories, I don't just think about reading. I don't just think about Elar. Um, I'm just a teacher who loves to teach and I've taught everything. And so this is a math story. So this is a math story um, that actually I was in the store um, shopping um, as I do weekly. 
<laughs> and I came up with this story. But I can say also, as a math teacher, I love to see kids go out and do the same thing. I know as a sixth grade math teacher, unit rate was something that my kids needed. Like it's something that they really struggled with. So allowing them to go out to the grocery store and look at unit rate and then develop their own stories um, is really powerful. But also as a math teacher, um, when I would get students work, I would always wonder like, what did you mean by that? So again, using the same saw earlier, allowing kids to go through either creating their own story or using your math story and not just do the work, but tell you what they did and why they did it. I know I would be at home and I'm looking at work and it's like, I just want to know like why they made these moves. Um, sometimes just as we look through student work, some of those things are just kind of left to wonder. We don't know, but allowing um, Screencastify to be layered on as a means for kids to tell their stories in mathematics allows them to explain um, their reasoning as well. Next, I'm going to jump in to some of my absolute favorite tools um, that again, allow us to tell stories in a different way. Not just writing stories with characters and setting and plot, but actually bringing in um, maps as powerful tools for um, storytelling. So as we go through these examples, again, um, just stretch your thinking to think past um, ELAR, but also think like cross-curricular. And I'll, I'll even give you some um, examples of how we can tour the world um, with the storytelling and the Screencastify. So looking at Google Maps in the classroom, some examples of ways that we can um, use these tools that I'm going to show you in just a moment. Um, you could just use them to retell important historical events. Um, locate settings in a story or even as settings change, allow kids to actually put these things um, on maps. And I'll give you a couple of examples of what that would look like. Um, of course, story retail, that's always good. Um, I have um, some younger students in my house. And so it's I know that's always a great skill um, for younger kids to be able to, to retail um, their story. Um, calculate distance. So as they're putting things on the map, actually bringing in those math skills to calculate um, distance. And you can even take those calculations and allow them to plan and budget um, for trips. And then also locating animal habitat. So as you're studying animals and where they live, they could also put those ideas on the map as well. So these are just a few ideas. Um, I just wanted to share a few um, just so that as we're going through these next tools that you're able to kind of think um, of different ways to tell stories in your classroom. So the first tool that we're going to look at for um, using maps for digital storytelling is Google Maps. Um, with this tool, we're able to create a custom map. I can put whatever I want on the map in order to share. Um, this is a great way for students to learn about others. I love to see um, at the beginning of the year, a lot of times instead of having kids write about your summer, or tell, stand up and tell me about yourself. This is a great tool to let kids put things down that are in their community or things in their life that they want to share. Um, they can share their community. They can share what they did in the summer. Um, they can share their favorite places. They could share whatever it is, but they're able to put these things on Google Maps and then share their story. So before I show you what that looks like with Screencastify, um, I will just jump in and show you. Here is an example of a map that I actually um, used for, for a trip. And so you guys can see just different places that we went um, in New York. And so let's say that I wanted to um, add a place here. I'm just going to put the Brooklyn Bridge. If I wanted to add a place, once I go to Google Maps, I simply look up that place. If I want to add it, I can click on Add to Map. I can also, it has it gives me different options down here. I can change the style of my pen. Maybe I wanted a house and I want to change the color. I can edit it. 
if I need to edit my words up there as well. Um, and then I can also add a picture. I'm going to just do a Google image search. We'll take that one. And then I'm going to save that and I'm going to add it on my map. So I have all of these places um, that I visited. Some have pictures and some don't. And so students could go through and use this to share about their community. They could use this to go through and share. And it doesn't have to necessarily be in their community. Um, this is also, to me, it's so powerful for, I think about the students that I teach. And sometimes um, they don't get to get out of their community and out of their neighborhood. But um, tools like this allow them to see places um, and allows them to reach and allows them to dream and as allows them to set goals for places that they would like to visit um, as well. So this is how you use Google Maps. And so once that map is created, I am able to use Screencastify as a powerful tool to retell my story, my journey. And of course, my story is not going to be as interesting as the students, but I could easily just click on um, Screencastify. And once it gives me the countdown, I could just go through and I could tell you about my my trip um, as well. So that is Google Maps. Another tool that I really enjoy is Tour Builder. Um, some examples similar to um, similar to Google Maps is of course I could retail historical events. Um, I could share a personal journey and I'm going to show you this Sharing with um, Tour Builder is a little different than with my maps. It kind of goes a little more in depth with what students are able to type up and share as well. Um, kids become a tour guide. So it really is, um, it's Tour Builder. It's really creating um, a tour in order to take people on a, on a journey. And so I will just show you what Tour Builder looks like. Here is a sample tour. Um, I just clicked on view tour. And so you guys can see that with this, I'm able to add pictures. I'm able to add video. Um, I'm able to put these things on the map. Um, I'm able to um, actually add words right here on the tour. So if I hit next, it'll take me to the next place um, on the map. And there I was able to tell where that is. You can actually put through a slideshow. Um, I'm able to add words as well. And I'll just click through so that you guys can see um, what that looks like, what that looks like. So in order to use this tool, I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'll show you um, a story with Screencastify. So if I were to create a new tour, the first thing it's going to ask me is to give my tour name, and it's going to ask for the author. And then immediately it asks me to go ahead and add an introductory picture and to tell what's a good summary for this tour. This is a So this is a sample tour for Screencastify, and I guess I'll just add a picture of myself there, because why not, right? Um, and then I'm at, able to, once I have that information, I'm able to just add a location. So I'm just going to put Dallas, Texas. I see in the chat, there's a lot of people from Texas. Hey, Texas. Um, so I can go ahead and I can find Dallas, Texas, once I have found Dallas, Texas, I can add it to the tour. And then again, it gives me all of these options for things that I want to add to my tour. It truly turns students into tour guides, which I absolutely love that. So I can add photos and videos. I'm gonna see if I can find a video on Dallas.
I wanted to, I could go through and I could also add pictures. Um, I can put a start date, end date, and then I could also use this space to talk about Dallas. And so then I can just go and I can add more and more and more um, locations. So once students have finished that, again, I'm sharing my tours. They're not going to be as exciting um, as what the kids do. But this is actually a tool that um, me and my own children at home that we use um, as we travel and um, just to keep up with our adventures. So here is um, what that would look like with Screencastify. Summer is here. I love summer, especially the uninterrupted time to dive headfirst in things I am most passionate about with very limited interruption. This tool will capture all of my summer adventures for 2019. Let's go. The Region 10 Tech Conference is one of my favorite learning events. Each year, this event brings together educators to learn and share ideas and strategies to create engaging learning spaces. This year, the conference was focused on ways to amplify and empower learning. I presented one session and appreciated the rich conversation and learning I was able to take away from the event. LearnFest Austin, Texas is my kind. This was a party. Who would enjoy connecting with educators from around the world, learning, sharing, great music, and laughs? So much fun. So again, those are just some examples of what that would look like with Screencastify. So this is just my example. Can you guys imagine the rich stories that um, kids would be able to tell by creating their own tours and telling um, their own stories? So. Again, that's just another um, geo tool that you could use in order to um, tell in order to tell stories. So I am going to I can actually um, open up if you guys have any questions. Um, I could I can see the chat if you guys um, have any questions or anything you would like to add. Um, again, this is my contact information. If you have great examples of storytelling or um, have further questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. I absolutely love to connect and share with other educators. Um, that's how I learn and that's how I grow. And I want to thank you so much for um, joining us tonight. Thanks so much for hosting tonight. It has been awesome. If you enjoyed it tonight and you would like to be a part of next month's free webinar series, I am dropping the link over in the chat box. Um, next month, we will be talking about narrating code with Screencastify. Um, so I know at least one person is going to enjoy that topic, but hopefully um, everybody here is able to use coding to really enjoy um, their students and to give them new opportunities to learn and grow. Um, so thank you so much. Make sure if you are not already following Nicole on Twitter and Screencastify on Twitter, um, that you do so, so that you stay abreast to everything that is happening. Um, good night. Thank you so, so much for spending some time with us. Um, and please feel free to reach out to either Nicole or myself if there's anything that we can do to answer your questions, um, or to serve as thought partners as you think about using Screencastify or more broadly technology in your classroom. Talk to you guys soon, bye.